All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome to, oh, is this episode 30? I believe it is. This is episode 30 of my XX Buddies, the podcast. That doesn't matter. I have to make that note for myself. Okay. So, and it's jam-packed. So, I'm not going to do all that other stuff. You know, the only thing I do like to point out is RSS.com has a transcript. So if you can't understand what I'm saying, go to RSS.com and look for my FX buddies and they have a pretty good transcript. Okay, the other stuff, just Google search, oh, internet search, my FX buddies and all the links that are available oh, on the blog which is myfxbuddies.blogspot.com, but there'll be a link in the description box or more box or info box, whatever they call it, wherever you, you know, wherever you're listening, that is um, how you get to the blog that has the video. Because if you're listening on YouTube, you're listening to a podcast. But the actual video is on the blog. All right. So here we go. It is Friday, March 22nd, 2024. And this probably will be up uploaded for that day. It's early. And that's why you're going to hear a bunch of noise. All right. So we'll get into it. Here's the title. Al Sadani will visit Washington next month and discuss the dollar and the development of the military mission and i already did a video but um not everyone will see that because it was kind of like breaking news so see this video here is at the very bottom of this blog um yeah so it's uh it's there but we'll go over it anyway because i know like the people on Spotify and the like, um, they don't watch videos. They just like to listen. Well, actually, Spotify.com, if you're a paying listener, does offer video content. All right. But anyway, so um, you could read all this stuff if you want. It's April 15th. That's the date that, oh, you know what? In this picture here is not, this is the foreign minister, Fouad Hussein, Fouad Hussein, what is his name? Fouad Hussein, I think that is his name, and this is Anthony Blinken. So a lot of these articles didn't have pictures, so I grabbed a picture. But anyway, don't, if you are, if you don't know, I mean, why would you know who the foreign minister of Iraq is, right? <laughs> but most people recognize Anthony Blinken um, because he's been flying all around trying to get ceasefires and stuff negotiated, right? Okay, and then, so this is an article in Iraq's news. And you see the title is different, right? It says, He'll visit next month and discuss the dollar. So here's the title on the whitehouse.gov website. Statement from the press secretary on the visit of Mohammed Sudani of Iraq to the White House. And then it just says they're going to talk about shared interests, a vision of a secure, sovereign, and prosperous Iraq. So... You can read all that. I mean, basically, the thing is, we're happy we finally have a date. And it is his first time going to Washington. Uh, he's been to New York, where the UN place is, but he hadn't been to Washington, D.C., according to one of the articles. Okay. So then here's another. There's tons of articles in Iraq's news. So I put different ones because... One article will have a sentence that another one doesn't. But, you know, they're here. You can read them if you want or not. And here is Iraqi banks are on the list of discussions 
between the Iraqi Foreign Minister and the U.S. Treasury Undersecretary. So I think this is an article out of Iraq. Yeah, that is too. So let me show you. Well, no, we'll just keep going. Okay, so I haven't done, this is Wednesday. This article right here came out on Wednesday. I thought it was interesting. One of the House of Representatives, Iraqi House of Representatives, suing um, the finance ministry because they're not dispersing petrodollar allocations, which is also saying they're holding up the budget, right? And he got a court date. His court date is April 3rd, 2024. So we'll see. We shall see what we shall see. So you can read that if you like. Um, this was big news. I mean, really big news. I think this was Wednesday. Also, Iraq officially, officially now is in the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. It's European, right? So that opens up a whole new group of businesses, banks, everything, right? And um, you can read that if you like. It This was already done, just for some reason now it's officially official. All right, this was a really big meeting. Let's see, can I make this bigger? This right here, oh. So this is Sudani. This is the finance minister. This is Aliyah Locke, the CBI governor. Um, I'm not, you know, you can't see those people, so I don't know who they are. But look, they're really reading. They're looking at documents. Some of them are taking notes. <laughs> so they're really working, right? Don't you just love, you know, that's a photo op. But that was a big meeting. And what it is about is Sudani chaired outputs of the sixth meeting of the Supreme Committee for Reconstruction and Investment. So pretty boring, but it's, um, they have a whole bunch of projects they want to do, right? Residential, industrial, entertainment, um, housing areas. What do they call it? green? Oh, we have them out here in California too open open something but it's like they have track homes right but then in between the group of homes they'll have like grass and some benches are there not really like a park just and they call it something i just can't think of the name but um they've already done some of those in fact wednesday night i think they were out um the people at this meeting were out at one of the projects that had been completed. It had statues and, you know, it was really nice. But anyway, all right, um, look at this. Leaders of Iraqi armed factions, so militia, right, meet in Tehran. Where is Tehran? Yes, in Iran. Tehran is the capital, I believe. I, I could be mistaken. Sorry, my car is loud. Um, of Iran. So there will be no end to the truce with Washington soon. So here, this, I'm not going to say that name, but what, how do I pronounce it? It starts with the H and ends with Bola. <laughs> um, and the I think that's safe to say Islamic resistance in Iraq. Those are two. So yeah, they went. The, so there's others, right, that aren't named. They went and met in Tehran. So isn't that crazy? But and here, here's official. See, they have they have a signature. That's not what that is. A logo. Here's a professional letter. All that. You don't have to read that. I just wanted you to see that. And here's more about it. So, very interesting, right? Okay, let's see. And then, remember the other day, they were there was an article saying Iraq is seeking other countries to purchase um, air 
the systems that shoot down missiles. Now, listen to this. Iraq is moving toward manufacturing armored vehicles and drones in the coming months. Combat armor, drones, what else? Armored vehicles and reconnaissance aircraft, whatever that is. But yeah, and it says we have workshops, a factory, and cadres working on production. Wow. They want their drones to be competitive with the Iranian drones. I mean, you can't blame them, right? But I just <laughs> thought that was interesting. All right, now this is interesting too. Saudi Arabia approves an agreement to open a regional office for the International Monetary Fund in Riyadh. So another little IMF. Oh, there might be someone that you listened to and years ago they had said they were told um, eventually there'll be 10 little IMFs around the world. So here's one of them. Yeah, Saudi Arabia. So there was something. And I don't know why this font is so big. And, you know, <laughs> when I tried to make it small, it just got bigger. So I said, you know what? I'm just going to leave it alone. <laughs> But this step reflects the, okay, here, our new office in Riyadh. So this is someone from the director of the IMF. Oh, yeah, Kristalina Georgieva. Our new office in Riyadh works to strengthen our presence and partnership with Arab institutions. So you see they're moving away from the West and moving towards the East. But, you yeah. It is what it is, right? So here's an article. Canada announces funding for development projects in Iraq. And while that was announced, guess who was in Canada? Yes, the foreign minister. He was opening an Iraqi consulate in Mississauga. That's how I'm saying that. Canada. And then he was off to... America. Uh, yep. So he was here. I think this may have been Wednesday. I'm not sure. Wednesday or Thursday. And his stay. Here he is. Fouad Hussein visits Washington today to raise the issue of American withdrawal. So why is he meeting with the U.S. Treasury? Hmm. But yeah, we and and. I don't even think Anthony Blinken was here that day. I think he's back, but he was out. So he's staying for several days. Where is it? His, during his visit, which will last several days. And there's a delegation. But let me show you something. Oh, no. Here. See here? This is where the real stuff is happening. And look, this is look how this guy's holding his coffee. And Fuad Hussein is thinking he's deep in thought. But yeah, so I I believe this they were together for about three hours today, Friday. Talking, look, he's got papers in his hand. Very official. So this is where the real business is happening, right? Right there. So, let me see. All right. Okay, so let's go back over here, right? All right. Let's see. Oh, here, this this title, listen to this title. Yeah, okay, so now we're on news from Thursday. All the, those other articles were from Wednesday, except for, you know, the ones today announcing Sudani's visit. Parliamentary Committee... The, and it's the Oil, Gas, and Resources Committee, says the oil and gas law is lingering in the corridors of the government. And the reason, I said, boy, isn't that a good way to describe that lingering <laughs> in the corridors? So you can read that if you want. It basically says all the same stuff we know. They can't get together on an agreement. So here's another uh, international something or another that Iraq has been ascended to, but it's not the World Trade Organization. It's the World Federation of Free Economic Zones. Yep. 
So they've ascended to that. We're still waiting for the announcement of the WTO. And what this will do for them? This affiliation confirms the objectives of the Industrial Estates Authority in creating an environment conducive to investment, innovation, and economic diversification by benefiting from the organization and its global network, as well as attracting foreign investment to Iraq. And then there's more blah, 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 right? This is a great article, but it's very long. It's actually the full version of a shorter one. See how long it is? I'm still scrolling down. But listen to the title. Societal Reluctance to Make Bank Deposits in Iraq. The full story. And boy, is it full. <laughs> but it talks about reasons for abstention, um, imbalance of financial inclusion. See, the Iraqi banking system suffers from a lack of citizen confidence. So if you've been around, then you know most of this stuff. But if you knew, this will help you understand why the citizens keep millions and millions and millions of dinars in their homes. Deposit in dollars and dinars. And I think the central bank standards. I think that's the last one. Oh, and U.S. sanctions. So yeah, very interesting. But you know, like I said, it's long. But it's there on the blog if you want to read it for free. Um, Here, they're talking about advisor to the prime minister. The decline of the dollar is an indicator of the strength of the dinar and a tangible success of the economic policy. So... This is Mohammed Saleh, the financial advisor to the prime minister. And he basically is saying the, oh, because the, the rate, the dollar rate was down. It got down to 1487.5. Let me see. Uh, I want to tell you the right, yeah, 1487.5 dinars per dollar and 1507, 1507.5 dinars. But it's back up to 1490 and 1500. So we'll see. But so because it had dipped down that, that little bit, which I guess is significant. They were talking about, oh, it's because of all the great things the CBI has done, and it's stable, which it has pretty much been stable, but um, we'll see what happens this weekend, and then also, um, well, we still have a ways to go before they get to eat off the tar. And then here's another article, internal and external reasons behind the dollar's decline. This is a different person. What is he? An economic expert, Saleh Nuri. And, you know, same thing. Um, this is good. This this article is kind of long. It's Again, it's from that one website where the, the vocabulary is a little higher. Um, I don't know the right word. I should probably learn to articulate better what I'm trying to say, especially when I'm talking about... <laughs> A little higher vocabulary, right? But anyway, what this guy is talking about is they're still having the problem of going to the gas station, which they call filling stations, and something's not working. Either the card's not working, or the technology's not working, and then the people want to pay with cash. But look, this... um. It was a young guy, and he walks up to this guy who wrote this article and says, Uncle, I am paying with the tefillah money, but leave us alone. So I think tefillah money is what they're calling the, the debit cards. And he says, we don't have technology money. So if you read this, they're still trying to pay with cash. And they had a video. You could see the attendant. 
he was like run you know swiping the card swiping the card swiping the card and then he just pulled out some dinar out of his pocket <laughs> and took the guy's dinar and gave him some cash back so you know what can they do what can they do if it's not working and people still need gas um i have to pause this okay if something crazy just happened that was me trying to use technology but i think it's okay though okay we're almost done i had to go do something so i paused I think I picked up recording at the place where I paused, okay? All right, um, yeah, so there was one sentence in here. So even though the guy's complaining, he says, at the level of state institutions, there is hardly a ministry or entity that has not taken steps towards digitization. So, you know, it's like we, we have to, go through it right the the growing pains or whatever we just have to go through it so but i thought that was interesting if you want to read about that and look at here they they're, they've been doing this they leave some words out they put an ellipsis there and um yes yeah, so i'd love to know what words they're leaving out check this out an official presence the opening of a new iraqi consulate in the chinese city Hmm. And the city is, where did it go? Guangzhou. Guang, Guangzhou? Guangzhou? I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> but there it is. 2024 is a crucial year to comprehensively promote Chinese style modernization. Under the wise leadership of President, you know, China is striving, that the Chinese president, China is striving to promote high quality development and build a community with a shared future for mankind. Oh, isn't that lovely? They just care so much about mankind. Okay, here, parliamentary insistence. So now we're on today's news. We're almost done. Um, parliamentary insistence on implementing Article 30 of the budget law. What does it include? Because they don't even know, right? But it's basically a industrial it cannot be a strong iraq economy without an industrial structure so this has to do with um i guess funds and laws that obligate all ministries and government institutions to meet needs and purchase requirement and supplies from local sources first so anyone who comes there to do business you have to try to get whatever product or whatever materials you need made in iraq so that you know iraq first right nothing wrong with that because they got to help them they got to help them so here bloomberg actually ran a here's and so i know i need to calm down calm down okay Baghdad wants to amend the budget to resume the export of Kurdistan oil. So I didn't see this on the news and I watched Bloomberg, you know, like way too much. Okay, I'm just going to say that. But it is there. And so here's the link. So this link right here is to the Iraqi article talking about the Bloomberg article. And this will take you to the directly to bloomberg unless bloomberg took it down which sometimes they do but um yeah so you can see and the only reason i thought this was interesting is because i always wonder will there be some type of announcement oh i meant to post that video did any of you guys go look at the cnbc kramer video that i talked about in the last podcast that was it's from 13 years ago, and Kramer is saying, buy Iraqi dinar. I was, you know what? I will. Post-production, I'll put that video at the bottom, the very bottom of this block. But anyway, so I'm wondering what type of announcement, if any, will be made. And I, I'm thinking the business websites will probably, the business 
channels and websites will probably say something like we we welcome Iraq back to the international world or international economy or you know something like that because why report on this right this is like an internal issue between Kurdistan and Turkey why does Bloomberg need to talk about it right but anyway just me um we can skip that for time's sake here is another article Mohammed Saleh talking about they have record reserves and he says 111 billion dollars and that's I I believe that's a low quote um but they all do it all the countries don't give their true numbers and should they really I don't know but yeah so that was that was a good article uh here's another article about the exchange rate so then here is um Iraq confirming that they agree with the date of April 15th for the prime minister to head to Washington DC and see it was urgent news there and here's another one Biden to host Iraqi prime minister on April 15th says the White House it will mark the first trip to Washington by Sudani who took office in October of 2022 and here's another one where the font is big and I don't know why oh and okay the last thing well second to the last thing you know I'm always saying I think this yeah so second to the last thing um in Iraq's news they had put so there was a vote at the UN right this morning and Russia for the for the mm, I'm not going to say but the ceasefire right in that that area over there that's four letters it starts with a G and ends with an A it's right here if you're looking but think about it okay so they voted Russia and China vetoed it so it was a no-go but they already have a vote for tomorrow according to French news news in France they're gonna vote again tomorrow oh you know this might be the wrong I tried to get the one with the most info well it had the time but I didn't know what time it was anyway it looked like it was military time and then it was in another time zone but yeah so tomorrow morning sometime at the UN they're gonna try to vote again on a ceasefire but the and these are really easy to read they're kind of like summaries you know they're not they're not telling us the whole all the details but so it kind of gives like a summary of um what's going on oh you know what maybe i'm looking at the wrong one duh i was looking at the wrong article <laughs> so here we go 1400 GMT I know I'm an idiot I I I know California time okay and I know you add three hours to get Eastern time that's good enough for me <laughs> so see this is out of French news they are gonna vote try to vote again tomorrow and so see they rarely 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 do they talk about the other um, I don't want to say war conflict Iraq's news hardly ever mentions the original one that has the country that starts with a U and ends with pain I mean rhymes with pain U pain right and Russia um and NATO right they hardly ever talk about that but they they talk about this this other conflict quote unquote a lot and so that's why I think this has more weight on affecting what we're waiting for than that other conflict right and so as long as this is delayed I think we're delayed but I could be wrong and I hope I am
All right, so the other little thing that I wanted to show you, I came across this today. Let's see, can I go back? So this is apparently, this is a cryptocurrency, this B-Y-A-T. And look at the little image there. And, oh, it went down. It was 61. Point sixty one the other this morning, but anyway, they're um pairing it to the Iraqi dinar. So what this tells me is people in Iraq are buying this cryptocurrency. Yeah, so see they trade and they buy they buy crypto. So um yeah. So there we go. So that's it. Today's Friday. Like I said, they're expecting more rain, more and not just rain, like heavy rain where they're going to flood and stuff over the weekend. I think it's going to be a slow weekend. Again, I would love to be proven wrong, but um, they'll be having a lot of meetings, especially with the the delegation that's here in America and then they're having all kinds of meetings in Iraq. And so if there's anything worth posting and bothering you on the weekend, I will do an up, up update. But I really don't think there is going to be. But anyway, enjoy your weekend. Um, I encourage people to spend time telling the ones you love that you love them because this world is so crazy and you never know if the last time you're going to see someone is the last time you're going to see them at least on this side of life right but anyway so yeah uh, accumulate while we wait for the rate to appreciate don't miss any mails and pay all your bills i have new subscribers some more new subscribers thank you i hope this helps um someone was like well you don't seem to think it's ever going to happen uh yes i do i wouldn't be doing all this and reading all these boring articles <laughs> if i didn't think it was going to happen i definitely wholeheartedly believe it's going to happen right but anyway so yeah all right so thank you um what enjoy the rest of your morning night noon whatever time frame you're enjoying this content. And until next time.